Hiya folks, got a few things to sort out today. Namely this, this is one of the uh, things I'm restoring on my Retro Hacks channel. I've been at this for now, uh, just over a week, and I've had a big reaction with it. So let's have a look and see, I'll tell you what the problem has been with it. Right, well this is an old lamp that we had sitting outside literally for five or six years sitting out the front of our property. It was all rusted and uh, you'll see the actual restoration when I actually come to release it. I was supposed to do this one last week but uh, I had a problem with it. I filled it, as you probably know, with my normal powder coat in putty which is this one here. This is the one I normally use and uh, unfortunately I'd left it in the oven for too long. It's supposed to cure at 160 degrees centigrade. I accidentally let the oven go up to 250, which is nearly 100 degrees more, and the surface started to bubble up. So I was going to powder coat it, but for that reason, that's the reason why I decided then to paint it with hammerite paint. Now I've got a stock of hammerite paint, as you probably know here in the UK. Hammerite paint is very, very expensive. So I was able to get hold of a few tins, which I've had for probably about a year or two sitting on the shelf which I picked up at a car boot sale, all brand new. I've got different colours. This is a red one. Uh, I bought about four or five in this sort of size and they cost me two pounds per tin, brand new. I thought it was too good to turn away. So I, chill, so I bought the gold, silver, red, blue. And anyway, cut a long story short, after painting this with the hammer, right? It all started to bubble up and peel. And as you can see, the sort of finish I was left with, it all peeled off. And uh, I've actually now got to strip this down because I'm going to repaint it again. I'll probably spray it. I don't know whether I'm going to powder coat it. I'm not too sure yet. But uh, again, this is the paint stripper, which I'm going to be using. It's a power strip. This is the one I use. It's quite expensive, but uh, it's not like nit nitromores or anything like that. They're, they're absolutely rubbish nowadays. But this is quite a strong industrial paint stripper as well. For those of you who saw my lawnmower video, this was the... Uh, powder coat filler that I used in the last video. I've never used this one before. I'd only used this because it was sort of half the price of the one I normally use, which is now this one. I'll show you that in a second. But this one, apparently you could put underneath powder coating, as it says there, metal filler, uh, high temperature for powder coating. So I basically done that uh, lawnmower deck, the one I powder coated with that filler. And as you know, when I cooked it in the oven, the powder coating showed through. This stuff, this is the one I normally use. This is a brand new tin uh, I've, I've actually just purchased. This one's called Novolt Thermal Epoxy Putty. Now this one, you have to cure it in an oven or at temperature. You can do it at room temperature, but it takes an age. By room temperature, this one cures, I think it was uh, like 20 minutes at 160 degrees centigrade. So this is the one I've always used. I've always had great success when I've powder coated on top of this and cooking it at the once you've cured it it actually works fine so i personally don't recommend this one this is one i used in a lawnmower filler uh, lawnmower video didn't work at all so anyway so i've got this now so i basically wanted to show you that sometimes the restorations don't always go to plan so this actual fitting i'm going to be converting to a electric fitting with a, a light bulb so just got to be careful with this stuff quite potent Okay, so let's put that down there like that. And let's just see how this reacts with this hammerite paint. It should do a good job of this actually. So I'm hoping to take this all the way back down. This thing was full of rust holes. You'll actually see that when I actually bring the video out. But uh, as I say, it was in a right hole state. So I'm going to give this a good coating and then we'll come back and see what it's like afterwards. Right, there we go. That's uh, probably five minutes later. I'm going to leave it to sit for a lot longer, but. Uh, as you can see, that's done the job. So I can get that all washed down, cleaned off, and then I can really paint it again properly. I may even powder coat it yet, see how we go. But uh, yeah, power strip that is. That's the stuff I use. Very good stuff. Okay, so this is another long line deck. That last one you saw us working on. Gary's just painted it red. Uh, he done this a few days ago. So what I'm gonna have to do before we lacquer this, because this is only rattle can paint, I'm gonna need to scuff it up with a Scotch Bright pad. I've got a few of them, so let me go and get one. So I've got one here, bear with me. 
Don't need to use all of this, so I'll just cut a bit off. Grey Scotch Bright pads are ideal for this, so uh, again, just chop that off like that. There we go. That's all I need. And all we have to do, just to prepare this for the new lacquer to go on, is literally just scuff over the surface. Now that might look a bit severe to you, but uh, I can guarantee you when we um, lacquer this, that will come back to full gloss again. So this just literally prepares the paint to accept the lacquer. So I'm gonna go over all this now with the Scotch Bright pad, and then I'll come back to you before we actually lacquer it. Okay, that might look a little bit severe. Let's just show you what we've got as a finished surface. Well, as you can see, that shine is now all gone. But uh, the reason why we've had to do this, as I said to you, is because we've, uh, we didn't lacquer it straight afterwards. So as you can see, it's got dust on the surface now. So we've got to wipe that off. So I'm going to use a wax and grease remover and a cloth just to wipe that off. So, I mean, it's nothing to be frightened about taking a Scotch Bright pad to freshly painted paint. <laughs> it's got to look worse, unfortunately, before it looks better. So. Uh, that's just saying all painters know when they're putting a finishing coat on. And you'll probably see that when I wipe this wax and grease remover on, first of all, let me show you. When I initially wipe it on, look, can you see the shine come back? And that's exactly what happens with lacquer. But all we're doing with this, as I say, is taking off that residue. So I've got to go all over this deck now just to get rid of all that residue before I uh, apply the lacquer. Just like that. And this literally is just to remove all the dust and contaminants. As you can see, when it dries out again, which don't take long at all, you can see it goes back to its original state. But obviously when you lacquer it, it stays glossy. So that's what we're doing now. That's what we're ending up with. Again, there's obviously flaws in the paintwork. We're not too worried about that. We're just literally tidying this mower up for as little work as possible. We've really done no preparation time on this and uh, it should hopefully look a lot better than what it was before. So I'm gonna get the gun ready now and uh, we'll put the lacquer on it. Right, okay then. So I've gone over that obviously with a wax and grease remover. I'm just gonna go over it with a tack rag now just to pick anything that was floating about in the air. This is just a sticky cloth. You've probably seen on my previous videos that uh, I use these on paintwork. They're, they're really cheap to buy anyway, so I don't know if you can see or not, but it's already picked up a couple of things, look. You see a couple of bit of black marks there. It's not really crucial on uh, a thing like this little mower deck, as I say, which is, there's still flaws in it, so I'm not really worried really. It's just good practice, and that's something I've always done anyway, so. Right, that's that. A lot of people ask about my spray gun and my setup. Well, this basically is a Devilbis SRI Pro. It's basically a spot repair gun. This one has got a one mil tip on it. You can get them 0.8 and one mil tip. 0.8 you normally use for a base coat, which is a water-based base coat. I've used my clears with this, uh, with no problems whatsoever. I've actually sprayed a whole car with this gun as well, although it's only a spot repair gun. And the sprayers out there have said, oh, that's ridiculous, blah, blah, blah. But it does work. It's only that the container is a lot smaller. Uh, so that's got a one mil tip in it, and it's got, I have the fan on the full fan open. So the fan's got a full fan setting. Uh, the pressure which we're running is two bar, which is about 28 PSI. And you'll see now, obviously, when I put it on. So I'm gonna set myself up now, put my mask on, and we'll start to put this on. I'll put the fan on, so I'll have to, uh, you won't be hearing what I'm saying, so I'll see you in a second.
Right, okay. We'll come through to the back workshop now, leave it in there. The extracts is on. I know there's a lot of overspray in there. Until I get me other part of the log cabin built, where I'm gonna have a separate sort of spray booth, I've just gotta make do with what I've got. I've got good extract in there now, so that clears in no time anyway, so that's that. Yeah, so I'll let that go off. I've just put the gun to one side. There's no need to clean the gun out in between uh, spray coats. I'll give that 10 minutes, come along with a second coat, and this time I'll go on it with a little bit heavier coat. Your first coat you always put on nice and light, it just gives you like a binding coat, so to speak. And we'll achieve our gloss finish on our second coat. So let's come back in 10 minutes time. That's really happening now, look at that. Look. That's really worked, that's that power strip stuff I use. Look at that, fantastic. There you go, power strip. But that's my extract I've got there. This is ideally where I wanted to do a little spray booth sort of thing. Only temporary, but this is more for the small stuff, for the powder coating and the small stuff. I really need a bigger area so I can... Uh, someone did suggest getting a, a shower curtain, which I, I was possibly going to look at, but uh, that clears this room really quickly. It's been five minutes so far, and this room's totally clear of the fumes anyway. So I'll just set the gun up now, and then we'll spray this now. So let's get it, get, let's get it sorted. you always have to do I always do it keep your quality dust mask in the bag and keep it sealed up because you don't want to just leave that laying about in the workshop and get impregnated with dust so the next step of the uh, procedure is this is the only downside with spray painting using a spray gun like this is that you've got to clean the gun straight away now you'll find a lot of painters they'll just put in a quantity of thinners in there swish it around, squirt it through, tip it out, put some more fresh thinners in, and then leave the thinners in the gun. Well, that's all right, but you don't actually clean the little nozzles and the little jets, especially if you're using thick filler primer, they can leave little residue inside there still. So you have to strip your gun down, just take the air cap off. Underneath is your actual uh, nozzle, your jet. All we need to do here is literally just strip it down I think that's a six or seven mil if I remember rightly. So a little six mil socket on this one. Little ratchet. And the undo, and that just unscrews. And literally, uh, let's get a clean container there. Oh, I've got a clean cup there. Just undo the nozzle. So that goes into the cup. You need to unscrew the needle down through by undoing that screw at the back there. There's a little spring in there for a little control. I normally just put that on the shelf, no need to clean that. And then you push your needle out, pull it right out. That goes in the container. I'll take the cup off. And then I'll give this a good clean through down in there and in there. What I normally do is I normally have a, a large container and stand that upside down in the uh, like thinner solution, give it a little agitate it a bit, then bring out and then just stick one of those little brushes in there just to clean out in there. Blow it out with the airline, fill it up with some uh, fluid, some thinners, and again, once that's all clean, rod that out as well. Where is it? Oh. Get one of the little brushes that goes inside there, push it in and out of there, and uh, then blow that out with the airline. I forget where mine are, let me go and have a look, hold on. No, I can't find my little brushes, so I'm just gonna have to let them soak in some finish for the moment. Be with me. Just put that in there like that. So all I'm gonna do is just to drop my needle 
nozzle in there like that. And I'll just stick that, and I'll just put that to the back for the moment. I'll have to clean that later when I find my nozzles. Right, okay, well, I might as well leave this video here. There's not a lot I can do in here now until that paint dries. That's gonna probably be 24 hours. See, that's the only difference when you're painting the deck by hand with a spray gun. You've got to wait, or even rattle cans, you've got to wait for the paint to actually dry, and that's a good probably 12, 24 hours. I know a lot of these are touch dry within about four or five hours or whatever, but when you're assembling something, you know, you're put, pushing pressure on with your thumbs and your fingers, and that will leave indents in soft paintwork. Where the powder coating, as soon as it's cool, that's it, it's rock hard, no worries with that whatsoever. Just like to also say hello to Harry Antcliffe. He left a little message on my Facebook page, and uh, just to say hello to you, Harry, he's a viewer, he watches the videos. And uh, yeah, so that's it. I'm going to leave it here, as I said, for now. And don't forget, if you are, if someone did contact me to find out where they can get our merchandise from, there we do the hoodies and also the uh, the retro restore T-shirts. All you've got to do is go to eBay and type in retro restore, and you'll find the hoodies and the T-shirts there. Well, I'll just get me airline now and give that a blow through. Simple as that. Needle. Give that a wipe over. That's clean out. Let's get the air cap out of there. Again, just give that a quick wipe over. And again, a little blow through with me uh, nozzle. That's all you need for that. Me little end. Again, should have goggles on really, but uh, make sure that it's nice and clean. And when you look through it, it shouldn't have any blockages whatsoever. And that basically is as simple as it is to clean the gun. So I'm going to put the uh, end back on. I'm not going to tighten it up yet. Put that back in there. Put my spring back in. What I normally do, I pull the lever in, turn the handle, turn up and feel resistance on the handle, like now, and then as you wind it in, it pushes the lever forward, and that's how you get less flow out sort of thing. So I've wound it in, the gun trigger is only moving halfway sort of thing, you see? So if I only wanted half the power out, but if you want full flow, keep unturning it until your lever does its full length of pull and push, so to speak. And just literally nip, that's it. Air cap on. Like that, ain't got to be too tight. And that I've already cleaned out. Put it back onto your gun. And some people like to leave a drop of thinners just in the cup, as you can see. Ensures you've got a clean uh, channel and if there is any gummed up pieces in there while leaving that thinners in there you're making it nice and clean for the next time there we go there we go so that's my uh my video for today not much in it i'm afraid but uh, as i say i'm just thinking about sunday afternoon and if you do like our videos do hit that subscribe button and ring that little notification bell there and set your preferences to all that way you'll get notified every time we upload a video anyway thanks very much and i'll see you in the next video and until then bye for now